right, you'll think you've made a good decision. If I'm wrong, don't blame me. Okay, Harry Dean came out with a theory uh, that today's economic activity is dictated to by birth rates 50 years ago. Because at 50 years old, we are at our peak earning and spending. Now, how does this work? <coughs> this is a population birth rates in the United States for about the last 100 years. When do you buy your Harley Davidson? Anyone know the age? 42. Not quite. The average age to buy a motorbike? 49.50. And it's not a little spike, it's, it's a big one. Now, in 1980, Harley Davidson almost went bankrupt. They blamed the Japanese and they were making a shoddy product. But that wasn't actually the real reason why they were in trouble. What happened 50 years prior? Birth rates dropped. Now since 1980, Harley Davidson has done very well. It's interesting, I wouldn't be buying Harley Davidson's shares now. Because the baby boomers have moved on. And it's interesting that Harley Davidson came to New Zealand recently and said we are looking at a different demographic now to sell. Mainly because this lot's moved on. Now, Harry Dean, his theory, he thinks that the Great Depression in the 30s wasn't triggered by a share market crash or banks going bad. It was triggered by birth rates 50 years prior in 1880, dropping when there was a panic, which is worse than a depression. And it fed through to that cycle. And this is why we've had, since 2007, a drop in economic activity because our birth rates have dropped out. Now, that got my curiosity. So I got the New Zealand birth rates. And our ones are slightly different. Same pattern, but there are different points. Now, the Americans' baby boom started in 1946, when the war soldiers came back. Ours started in 43. Now, 1940, they all went to North Africa for three years. Came back for six months, and then had to go back again to Italy. But a ruling came out, you've already served, you've married with children, you don't have to go back again. Some bright spark came up and said, and if your wife is pregnant, you don't have to go. There was a lot of activity, and that's when our baby boom started. Okay, that's the actual birth rates in New Zealand. This red line is the actual population for each of those age groups at that point. And there is a variance, and you'll see that as we go. 26 year olds is the average age of a renter. Average. We're only dealing with averages here. And the variance here is the number of 26 year olds in 2003 actually in the country compared to the birth rates 26 years prior. It's starting to open up. And I suspect that this is overseas students in New Zealand. Now, we've had a good run on rents, but it hasn't actually kicked in yet. It will start kicking in around about now, and we've got another three or four years of good rents coming up. Because the, 26 years ago, the birth rates lifted. So I can see rents climbing because of the numbers coming through. And the whole concept of this, a few years back I've got a client who's a train driver, he said, jump on the train, we're going up to Arakuna. And he had a 1,600 tonne, mile and a half train. And out at Hunterville, there's a blip. We were in the train and as we came along, we hit the hill. And the train didn't slow down, it went straight up. It was amazing. I said, shit, this is a powerful train. I said, you watch. Then we started going downhill. Instead of putting the brakes on going downhill, we were dead accelerating. And he went full power. And we were still dead accelerating. I said, what's, what's going on? He said, most of the train's still down the bottom. We're trying to pull it up the hill. Get to the flat. And you put the brakes on. And on the electric trains, the brakes is actually generated and they start putting power back into the line. Here, we were taking off and he had brakes on full. Because most of the train was still coming down the hill. 
the, the analogy here is most of the economic analysis we get is based on the last five years. Whereas this is based on 50 years. And then is saying that the recession we're seeing was actually predicted 50 years ago. Because the birth rates came down. The average age of a first home buyer is 31 years old. We've seen this kick in because of migration and so on. 31 year olds buying their first homes. We haven't actually seen the worst of this. By 2017, there's going to be a surge based on birth rates 31 years ago. And we're not seeing this drop. So first home buyer problems haven't even kicked in yet. At 42, you buy your second home. So the second home you buy, according to this, we've got, this is the last year that you can sell your second home. Because the next 10 years, it's downhill. Based on 42 years ago. This one's interesting. See the gap here? I suspect, well, people are starting to die. Now, John Key has said, He's not worried about the pension. He doesn't need to do anything about the pension. And he's absolutely right. He's unlikely to be Prime Minister when it kicks in again. <laughs> which is 2018. So he doesn't have to do anything with the pension. What will be funny though is, I wonder if Winston will be in power. It's going to go to 700. For my generation. It's going to be means tested. It's going to be asset tested. It'll be frozen until it equals the dollar because we can't afford that. Rightly or wrongly, there's just not going to be the people to provide the income for the pension, as well as health costs. Now, granny flats, one or two bedroom granny flats. Usually by the time they're 72 year old, granddad's died, grandma's been moved into a smaller flat. There's another year of demand for granny flats. Then it'll inexplicably drop because 72 years ago, all the young men were in North Africa. Then when they came back, boom. There's your demand side for granny flats. Now this one spooks me. This is bums on seats. This is 20 to 63 year olds. So the US <coughs> haven't actually worked out the New Zealand. But Look at this drop. I wouldn't be touching commercial property. I've got a lot of friends and family who are farmers. And I'll say, yes, I'll come and have a cup of tea with you. Then I'll show you this, and then you'll kick me up. But I'll have the cup of tea first. That's the demand for farms. 1966, when my dad became, took over from his dad, farming diverged from you can earn, pay the mortgage, and have a living. At this point, you went for capital gains. And that's because there was such a surge coming through of young guys. Now, in the 80s, 70s and 80s, my cousins went to Flockhouse. Only the Ponzi bastards went to uni. By 1984, when I came out, there was such a surge coming through. If you didn't have a degree, don't bother applying for a job. My generation had to go to university. We're at this point here. And I can see commercial property. The demand for commercial property, like this little building, is going to drop right back off. So I wouldn't even go, personally, I wouldn't go near it. And I think farm prices will follow that graph. 